Hi, my name is Deidre, and I'm back again with Yoga Renew, continuing our series on intro to inversions. And so today we will work with introduction into Adamukha Vrikshasana, which is handstand practice. So we'll start class today in child's pose. Watch a moment here. Setting up for child's pose, we'll take the knees wide, just as wide as the sticky mat, and then the big toes are together. And I wanna pay attention to the length to the back of the leg. So right now, the back of my thigh is pushing forward towards my knee, and that will pull my spine down. That's why my shoulders are kind of rolling forward this way. So I'll lift, and I can use my hands to draw the hamstring back. So as I relax the abdomen and the buttock, I'll use my hand to take the back of the thigh to the buttock, and then the buttock flesh back. And, and so see when I sit up straight there, that length to the back of the leg helps to lengthen the sides of the body and helps to free and extend the spine. So now with that length coming to the back of the leg, I can reach my hands and my arms forward to stretch the sides of the body even more. Even in the pose, I can work to draw the hamstring back so that I find a little more space to move further forward. And then from here, we'll lift up onto, the, onto all fours. We can have the hands as wide as the shoulders or holding the sticky mat gives us a little more grip. And then we'll tuck the toes under and raise the legs up for downward dog pose. Just like we were freeing the backs of the legs in, in child's pose, we'll do the same thing here in downward dog. So you can see if I just push back, see how the front body contracts and my back grips. So watch when I lift my heels, I'll imagine my hands are at the backs of my legs again. So I lift my heels and see there how the back of the knees lift to the back of the thighs. I'll lift my heels again and see there how the backs of the thighs lift to the buttocks. And as the buttock bones lift to the ceiling, see how my sides get longer and I get freedom and height in the hips there. Now, keeping that height in the hips, I can pull the sticky mat forward and press the thighs and the knees back. So that stretch in the arms and the legs helps me to extend the spine further. From here, we'll walk forward into Ardha Uttanasana. This is half Uttanasana or half standing forward bend. Here, my hips are over my heels, shoulders over my wrist. For some of us, it may be difficult to straighten the arms and the legs. So if you have blocks, you can take your hands to blocks. You can also separate your feet a little wider so that your arms and legs are straight, but you also have space to move. So here, watch as I press my fingertips into the floor as if I'm pushing away from the floor. Because right now my arms are straight, but I'm kind of, there's a sinking down. So watch when I press my fingertips, how the arms extend, and there's this connection all the way to the upper back. This is important for our handstand practice. So keeping that stretch in the arms, I'll now lift my toes to draw the kneecaps and the quadriceps up. So I'm starting to use those big muscles in the arms and the legs to create this shape. And then we'll go through that cycle again. So bending the knees, I'll place my hands down or hold on to the mat and step back again to downward dog pose. And see again, can I lift my heels to lift the back of the knees to the backs of the thighs, to lift the backs of the thighs to the buttocks, to raise the buttock bones to the ceiling. And then keeping that height to the back of the legs, I pull the sticky mat forward and press the thighs and the knees back to get longer through the sides. And then we'll come forward into Uttanasana feet as wide as the mat, shoulders over the wrist, hips over the heels. And we take the support that we need to straighten the arms and the legs. So remember again, pressing the fingertips, we stretch the arms. Lifting the toes, we comb the muscles in the legs up. And now with that firmness in the legs, I'll press my thighs back and pull my chest forward to lengthen my spine even more. And then to come up, we'll take the hands to the hips, press the feet, come all the way up. So now, 
Standing in Tadasana with the feet and legs together, we'll bring our weight back into the heels. And just like we were working in Uttanasana, lifting the toes here, see how I palm the muscles in the legs up. And that firmness in the legs actually helps to lift the spine even here. With that, I'll take one arm up. So with my hand at that arm, I can roll the inner arm towards my ear, and then I can use this hand to help me stretch my arm. And so watch now, as I press my heel down, I'll use my hand to lift my arm to lengthen the sides. So see those two things, pressing the heel to stretch the leg, lifting the arm with my hand, see how that whole side of my body gets longer. And then we can switch. So with the weight in the heels again, we'll lift the toes, comb the muscles in the legs up, and from here I take the other arm up. And I can use my hand again to roll that inner arm towards my ear, pressing down with the heel. I lift my arm to stretch that whole side. So I'm starting to learn how the arms and the legs work together to lengthen the sides and extend the spine. And then we can release there. And we'll do again, this time with both arms. So with the weight in the heels, lift the toes to comb the muscles in the legs up. And with an inhalation, press your feet and swing the arms up. So even though we don't have our hands holding the upper arms anymore, can we still roll the inner arms towards our ears? And with that rotation, spreading the fingers, I'll press my heels and lift my fingers to lift the arms. Lift the fingers and the arms to lengthen the sides of the body. So I'm finding that long line of extension there. And then exhale, and we'll take the arms down. And so next, we'll take Ur Urdhva Bhadangulyasana, Upward Bound Fingers Pose. So interlocking the fingers like this, we'll turn the palms forward. And with the palms forward, we can move the legs back again into the heels. As I lift my toes, I'll press my heels and swing the arms up. And so just like we did in Urdhva Hastasana, Upward Arms, we can press the heels here and draw the knees and the thighs up and press the palms to the ceiling to get that stretch in the arms. So again, the arms and the legs work together to bring that length and extension through the sides. And then we can release, turn the palms to face us, and change the interlock of the fingers. With that new interlock, palms are forward, legs back. As we lift the toes, press the heels, we can swing the arms up again. So as the heels go down, we'll lift the hands to lift the arms, lift the arms to lengthen the sides of the body. So again, there's that long line of extension there. And then release and take the arms down. This next part will interlock the fingers behind the back. The heels of the hands can be a little apart here and that'll give us a little more space. So just like we did in the other poses, we'll shift the weight into the heels, lift the toes to firm the knees and the thighs. And before we take the upper arms back, we'll work to raise the sides up. That lift in the sides helps us so that when we take the upper arms back, that big hump of the upper arm or outer shoulder, when that goes back behind the level of my chest, see how the side chest moves forward and the upper back starts to move in. So lengthening the sides before we roll the shoulders back is important for the extension in the spine and that connection into the upper back. So again, now as I press my feet, I can pull my hands down as I lift my chest to the ceiling. And then we'll exhale and relax a little and change the interlock of the fingers. With that interlock again, we'll bring the weight into the heels, lift the toes, and as we press the heels, we'll raise the sides up and then roll the upper arm bones back. So again, that sequence, sides up and then arms back to lengthen the spine and open the chest. As I press my heels and stretch the arms down, I'll lift the top chest there. And then with an exhalation, we'll release. And Urdhva Hastasana again, pressing down into the heels, we'll swing the arms up. So as we press the heels and lift the arms to stretch the sides, I can move my arms back a little to get that upper back to move in and then even flip my hands to the ceiling. So with the palms lifting to the ceiling, I can find that long line of extension similar to how we work in, in handstand. And then we can release 
and roll the shoulders back. So we'll move on to something that I like to call bunny hops. And this brings together the way that we were stretching the arms and the way that we were raising the hips. So with my hands as wide as my shoulders, palms flat on the floor, see how I bend my knees as much as I need to get my hands down. But even though the knees are bent, the hips are up. So I wanna keep that length to the back of the leg, that height, to the hips, and this is important for my jumping. So pressing the hands down, I'll stretch my arms and see that connection all the way to my upper back, just like we were working in Uttanasana before. Now with that stretch in the arms, I'm pressing my feet to raise my hips up. So there's a spring in, in action in how I'm lifting the hips, rather than picking the feet up, you can see how heavy that sounds. So the hips are high. And as I press my feet, the hips pull me up. So you can try that a couple times just in space. And, and, and if it's available, you might even then see, can you hop back a little, hop back a little bit more, even a little bit more until we're in downward dog pose again. And then we can bend the knees and look forward and raise the hips up high to hop a little forward, a little forward, and a little further forward. So again, just understanding how the arms stretch to bring that foundation and connection into the upper back. And the hips are light in the jumping. And then we can rest in Uttanasana there. So now we'll work to bring all of that together for prepping to come into handstand now. So with my hands down, shoulders over my wrist, I'll step one foot in and the other leg back. So we already know we have to press the hands to stretch the arms. So we get that connection all the way into the upper back. And then keeping that stretch in the arms, the hips are up high. Now, can I keep my arms straight, keep the hips up, and watch how I swing that top leg. I'm not pushing the leg up, I'm just swinging. So that leg is light. But notice, as that leg swings, the arms are completely straight and my chest moves forward. From there, we'll rest in Uttanasana again. And if that all was coming well, we'll add now the actions of the bottom leg. So the arms are straight again, one foot forward. I like to have the dominant foot forward and the other leg back. So this time, with the arms straight, pressing the hands to stretch the arms, I'll take my chest forward again. This time, as the top leg goes up, bottom leg is straight. As that top leg comes down, bottom leg bends. So for this time, we go up, down, up, down, up, down. That pumping is just helping to build momentum. Notice, in, while I'm pumping, arms are straight, chest still moving forward. And then we can rest in Uttanasana. So what's nice about those steps is that it's building the strength and connection into the arms, as well as the strength and support of the upper back. So if we are kicking up into handstands or if we're just learning those foundations, we're building that awareness to eventually get us into the pose. So now moving into our handstand practice, working on getting up, we'll go over to the wall. And so now that we've taken our sticky mat to the wall, we'll bring all of our work together to practice kicking up into handstands.
So getting into handstands, you wanna measure that your hand is about a hand's distance away from the wall. So that just means that you can go to the edge of the mat, the side that's to the wall, and just measure about a hand's distance. And we'll have the hands as wide as the shoulders, and it's helpful here to just slightly turn out the hands. That'll give us a little more rotation in the arms. So I'll do that now, and you can do with me. Without my hands, a hand's distance away from the wall, shoulders width, I'll turn the hands out slightly, and then come into that last position where the shoulders are over the wrist and the hips are up high. And with that organized, I look to the wall with my eyes and my chest, so I'm getting that upper back in. From here, we'll add the swinging of the top leg and the pumping of the bottom. So we can go one, two, three, pushing off the bottom foot, we'll swing the top leg up to the wall. One, two, three, and hop. One, two, three, and hop. And then after a while, we can rest in Uttanasana. So just giving some time for the legs to stay firm and the head and neck to release. And we'll work with those hops again. And eventually, as we work that way, we'll, we'll get up. So that looks like this with the shoulders over the wrist, one foot forward, hips high. We go one, two, three, and hop. Once we're up, just like we were working before, we press the hands as if we're pressing away from the floor. And then with that stretch in the arms, we can slide the legs up. And keeping that all organized, I look back to the wall to move the upper back in and then the center buttocks moves away. And eventually, we find the balance that way. And then we can step down and rest again in Uttanasana. So what we find then is that all of the preparation to getting into handstand helps us when we're kicking up and even helps us when we get into the pose to come into the balance. So after practicing those hops, practicing the swinging of the leg and the kicking up, we'll calm down a little or cool down a little in Viprita Karani. So we'll take a bolster or pillows and a folded blanket to the wall like this. You can have your props about an inch away from the wall. We'll sit sideways at the edge of the bolster, and then I lean to the center. From here, I can swivel my hips so that my buttocks on the wall, and then the shoulder comes down, and I just roll on up. I can shift so that I'm centered on the bolster. I can even walk my shoulders in and pull that bolster in towards my upper back. And then keeping the bolster in place, I'll release my hips back towards the wall and I can cactus the arms and take one leg up at a time. So after all of the hopping, now the legs get a break. We can let the weight of the legs release back towards the wall. The hips here can release into that space between the wall and the bolster. And with the back body supported by the props, the abdomen can become quiet. We can soften and relax the front ribs, soften and relax the skin on the chest. As we settle there, we can let the weight of the arms rest into the support of the earth. And let go with the shoulders. From there, we'll relax and release the head and the neck. And at some point when you're ready, you can bend your knees 
and cross your legs at the center shins. And from there, just let the legs rest back towards the wall. And we'll settle here for a bit, letting the whole body rest and cool down after our handstand practice. And then we can change the cross of the legs and rest again in that new position, letting the weight of the legs rest back towards the wall, letting the hips release. And with the head and neck quiet, we can soften and relax the muscles on your face. And then to come out of this position, we'll bring the knees together and then pressing the feet into the wall, we can walk the shoulders away from the wall so that the back and buttocks come onto the floor. And from here, you can cross your legs over the bolster. And you can take Shavasana with the legs crossed over the support, or you can stretch your legs out over the bolster, just moving further away from the wall so that the legs can stretch out over that bolster. Whichever variation you take, allow yourself to rest there fully. Let the weight of the legs rest in your support. Relax the arms. Let the whole back body settle here. Let the head and neck release and soften and relax the muscles on your face. Just let go here. And if your legs are crossed, you can change the cross of your legs and rest there. Again, let your whole body settle, release, and just let go here. And slowly bringing our awareness back to the surface. We'll place our hands on our abdomen and bring the legs into the chest. And we can slowly roll to one side, supporting the head and neck with our arm. And then keeping your head and neck quiet Gently press your hands down to lift yourself up. The head and neck can come up last. And we'll make our way into a tall seat. And you can join your hands together at the center of your heart here. Namaste.